President Biden says Facebook has blood on its hands. They're killing people. I mean, it really, they really, look, the only pandemic we have is among the unvaccinated. And, that, and, they're, and they're killing people. The White House says social media platforms aren't doing enough to curb the spread of vaccine disinformation, but Facebook is striking back and hard. At a time when COVID-19 cases are rising in America, the Biden administration has chosen to blame a handful of American social media companies. The fact is the vaccine acceptance amongst Facebook users in the U.S. has increased. CNN political commentator Alice Stewart is joining the conversation. Uh, this is, to me, extraordinary. Uh, for a number of reasons. But let's start with the first, Tamara. Uh, the White House is frustrated. It's reflected in what you heard the president say. They're, they're killing people. He literally said they're killing people. What is going on behind the scenes that has gotten us to this point? Yeah, and he essentially is just putting a finer point on what the administration has come to believe, which is this idea that they're, they have landed on that... Uh, this is a vac this is a pandemic of the unvaccinated. That is the new phrase that they are pushing out into the universe. Part of that is to try to persuade people to get vaccinated, but part of it, whether they want to admit it or not, is a bit of distancing. Is to say, right. you know, we've been trying to get people vaccinated. You know, the White House has says, but they're available. The vaccines are available. What they haven't been able to do is break through with. A lot of people who are getting information on social media, you know, I've spoken to medical directors in rural counties in Mississippi and, and Missouri, and, and they are just at wit's end. They're frustrated. They can't get their staff even to all get vaccinated. Right. And the reasons they hear are things that people read on Facebook, and they keep mentioning. Well, to, you know, Facebook points out, to your point, that the White House missed its own July 4th deadline to get to 70 percent, okay? That is true. Uh, they may be looking for a scapegoat. That is true. But I do wonder about the tone of this back and forth on, on Facebook's part, in part, because I recall for four years, they wanted nothing to do with pushing back mm -hmm. on President Trump. They were being accused by conservatives every day of all kinds of things. It's amazing to me that the statements that they put out on Friday and last night again about all of this, it, it seems like a complete change of tone. The rhetoric has certainly yeah. heightened to a great degree. And look, I think we can all agree that we should all strive to put out factually accurate information uh, on social media. And all social media platforms should strive for that as well. But we also have to realize they're the de facto public square. They are people talking to people, to their friends and people that are like-minded, and they're going to put out information that they truly believe in. And to be honest, a lot of people don't trust the, the government. And I think the, the, the yeah. question is, and the, the fear is, when we have the federal government taking attempts and taking steps to try and censor what is being out there in free speech and out there in the public square. And that's the question. I think the question, though, is what happens when it is clearly not true, when they're just lies? Yeah, well, that certainly needs to be corrected because we're seeing a lot of people, as you say, vaccine hesitant. For many reasons, they, they don't trust the government. We see African-Americans who are concerned about the Tuskegee experiment. We see Catholics who are concerned about infertility. Um, there's a lot of misinformation out there, and I think people would be better served listening to real news accounts, the CDC and our public health officials, and staying away from these uh, websites and social media sites that do spread misinformation. One element of this, of course, social media companies. The other element is the political dynamic of this, in mm -hmm. which it does seem that a lot of Republicans are taking advantage of vaccine denialism, and certain media companies, namely Fox News, uh, spreading it on their platform. I mean, just take a listen to some of this. It's just astounding the Democrats would try and mandate this, and it's, it's being done to college students, it's being done uh, at the workplace. The vaccines, uh, unfortunately, appear to be declining in effectiveness very quickly. Remember, it was 14 days to slow the spread. That's how this started. And now here we are mandating, apparently, that people get a vaccine. Oh, by the way, her father-in-law was wants credit for developing these vaccines, and yet... Why is it that this has become some kind of litmus test, political litmus test? It, it's clear that some Republicans sort of see this as uh, they can weaponize this issue to, to their own advantage, right? They're trying to say that, you know, 
Biden and the Democrats are going to force you to get a vaccine. They're trying to scare people in the base uh, that perhaps are already, they already have their own, hesitine, their, their own hesitancy when it comes to the vaccines. And I mean, that's unfortunate. It's not everybody. You have people like Mitch McConnell who have, you know, clearly and openly talked about getting vaccinated and how important it is. Uh, the thing that perhaps President Biden can do differently is maybe, I mean, where are these, he's got this big bully, pup, bully pulpit. Where are, you know, the events with Republican leaders where they're literally standing next to somebody who gets a vaccine in their arm? I mean, uh, it's sort of like a chicken and the egg thing, right? Like, is it that people are afraid uh, of the vaccine and they're listening to these conspiracy theories? Or could leaders be doing more, Republican leaders specifically, to talk to people in the Republican base who have these sort of concerns and try to say, no, that's wrong. These are the facts uh, and do more to work together and show an example. Well, and I think one of the things that the White House has said they're doing, it's one of the reasons they have this program. And it became like the, the it became like Antifa knocking on your door trying to get you to uh, get a right. vaccine. Yeah. 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 With exactly, door. exactly. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. But no, what, what, the, what they actually were doing were they were trying to get leaders from communities, churches, um, doctors who people knew to talk about the vaccine, to talk about um, the importance of getting it. And that's that's one of the ways that they've tried to reach people who aren't reachable by politicians, right. who don't listen to you know, the media. Um, they were trying to get trusted people involved. And that is one of the ways they're trying to combat this um, this, this it's vaccine denialism. But I, I just wanted to say, when it comes to Facebook, taking the White House out of this, they know this is an issue. They've known this was going to be an issue. In October of last year, they took they they made ads. You weren't allowed to run any ads that had to do with being an anti-vaccine. Mm -hmm. A lot of medical professionals saw this this as going as was going to happen with the COVID vaccine, and it, it is a question: what else could be done to stop this on and, social media? And it's not I don't think as much what this administration can say, but what they can do. I think they've led by example. They throughout the campaign. Uh, they social distance, they wore masks, they used caution uh, with the events they had, and it, it has paid off. We haven't seen a large number of people in the administration with COVID. I think that's important. But they also realize they might not be the best messengers mm -hmm. for this. That's why they're getting, um, they had Olivia out there this week. Uh, but okay, so to when, when, does, when does President Trump, who wants to be credited for Operation Warp Speed, wants to be credited for whatever, when does he step in and play a role in this? I, I don't expect that he will, and I don't expect him to be the, the best person to do that. I think it should be people that are closer to people that need these vaccines are on the state level. They're community leaders. They're health leaders. I talked to uh, Little Rock Mayor Frank Scott yesterday uh, in a ruby red state. He is a Democratic mayor in a ruby red state that has a terrible vaccine rate. And he is out there educating people and encouraging people and using local officials to, to try and encourage people and churches uh, and people on the local level that people trust and that people will, will have confidence in. That's where the message needs to come from. In Tennessee this week, we saw where this could all head. It's not just COVID-19. They paused communication to parents and children about other vaccines as well. Several of you here are parents. Um, that's really terrifying on Mind some level. It's, yeah. Yeah. it's just some, I, 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 just, I, I, it, I can't understand it. it but, um, you know, just like the door knocking that Jackie was talking about that then became the scary thing they're coming to get you, uh, a very simple explanation of, yes, vaccines are available for children 12 and up, uh, becomes a very scary thing in the wrong hands. And then that starts affecting policy. And the CDC and others have been very concerned that children are already missing right. their, their regular vaccinations. Their schedules are off because of COVID and doctor's offices being closed and parents being afraid. Um, and this just, it feeds into the anti-vax establishment that, you know, machine that already existed yeah. before. I think it's a really scary time, frankly, for all of us, because we've eradicated some of these viruses and it's not a permanent situation if people stop getting their vaccines. But coming up, it's do or die time for President Biden's massive plan to reshape the U.S. economy.